Recorded live with little or no editing, it's defense up. I'm Run7. How you doing? Okay, so these videos have started running a little bit long these days, so we're gonna put the team list in the description so you can just check down there if there's a specific team you're looking for. You can find out which order they're gonna be in, slide your slider bar to the appropriate spot, etc. cetera. Um, otherwise, uh, stay tuned, hang out for the whole video here. Uh, like and subscribe, all that usual jazz. I am really excited for both Defense Up videos that are coming out today. The first one up is Boylan's. Yes, last night he sent me over his defense picks. I love doing content creators because they have usually been playing the game and know enough about the game that they not only have a wide roster to work with, but they know how to place their defense. They know what they're doing. And so you can really see the style evolve in these different defenses. And believe me, there is style to, to policing your defense. And uh, we, we can talk about some of those styles um, whether it be you put in a troll defense or a hybrid defense or you're just using like really efficient trash or maybe you're just going nuts and you're one of those people who really likes war and you want to spend the resources on it just for fun and you build super big teams. We get to look at both of that today because in the other video, we've got someone coming from a big alliance who kind of went nuts on their defense and possibly the highest scoring defense that we've ever had here on Defense Up. But we're looking at Boylan's right now. And if you don't know Boylan, check him out. He's over on YouTube. He is a stat god. He has uh, spreadsheets for his spreadsheets. He knows statistics. He breaks down events. He knows character kits. He can explain a lot of stuff that I can't even. He's a really smart kid. Check him out. But first off, we're going to go into team number one as I get some things set up. All right, he's got a Merc team, and I'm trying to swing out of the way there. He's got a Taskmaster, went Raider on that Taskmaster. Killmonger is a Raider. Striker on Ultimus. And then he's got Merc Lieutenant as a healer. Okay, so Boylan is avoiding all the use of his Taskmaster as a Skirmisher. I don't like that. I love Taskmaster as a Skirmisher on this Merc team. I prefer doing... Uh, skirmisher on Taskmaster and all of the Mercs is Striker. And then, you know, whether you're running the Shuri variant and having her as a healer, or if you're going straight Mercs and doing all Striker and maybe keeping Merc Lieutenant as a healer for a little bit of that sustain, um, you know, that's whatever you want. He's running Ultimus in here. And the reason he's running Ultimus in here is because Ultimus really screws with the uh, Skilletary team. He, he just messes with that Red Guardian big time. So th that's a really good pick for this team. However, he's under the 400 power mark. So that means that X-Force would probably come in here and mess things up. And I'm thinking at his power, his power level for the Merc Lieutenant, with Merc Lieutenant being 60K, that's probably gonna be the character that drops below 50% when the X-Force comes in here. Um, you could fix those by changing them to Fortifier. I don't like that. Um, I'd say leave Merc Lieutenant as a healer. Bring up his power level. Give him like gear tier 13 if you can swing it. Uh, Merc Lieutenant. Again, I'd like to see him up over 65k at least. Hopefully that'll keep him from going under on that opening move. Um, the other thing that you could do is replace Killmonger with Korath. Korath the Pursuer, he opens up with that ability block maneuver. And um, if you make him, well, you want to make him a striker also. But there's a chance he's going to land ability block on Negasonic and screw that team up. If that happens, that team loses. It's it's fantastic when that happens. But it's a 20% you know, chance of occurring. Less than 20%, actually, because he doesn't always stick the landing. So... <clears throat> This is this is great. You know, he's got him as Raider because uh, Taskmaster bounces around a lot and does uh, chain attacks and AOE attacks so you can land lots of uh, vulnerabilities. But I, like I said, I like Taskmaster as a skirmisher. In some instances, you can run him as a striker because he steals positive effects. Um, against that Skilletary team, that's kind of weird because the Skilletary steals the positive effects and then he's like stealing it back and I don't know. Um, I like I like who you're using. The placement is pretty good. I think you should probably switch Lieutenant and um, and Korath. I'd like to see Skirmisher, Striker, Striker, Healer, Striker. That's what I'd like to see on those ISOs. It's not bad though, it's pretty effective. 
I just think it, it feels like you're trying to go two directions at once with this build. Um, your ISO investment isn't too steep, you know, and this 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 team still has some value. Um, especially, I mean, you're you're working against higher end alliances by putting him in here. You're working against Skilletary, so I, I think you should probably switch him up a little bit. Um, I'm going to give you a C for this. I, I think there's a lot of different ways you could go. It, like I said, it just feels like you're going in two different directions at once right there. All right, we got Pym Tech right here. Uh, we got Fortifier on Stature. I like that. Uh, try to get out of the way. There we go. I'm going to have to adjust my, my screen settings here so I don't block that, that fifth character. Uh, Skirmisher. I'd like to see Skirmisher down here. These two... 50% uh, of the time, one of them is called in. 50% of the time, the other one is called in. So uh, if you put Skirmisher on both of them, 100% of the time, Ghost is going to do that triple hit combo. So I'd like to see that change to his Skirmisher. I like Raider, I like Striker. Um, placement on this team doesn't matter so much. Although, technically, you could put Ant, you could swap places with Ant-Man and Ghost and get a little bit better results because Ant-Man is taunting. He can put him into the outside. There's no other reason. There's not, not really any adjacent stuff going on with this team. So... Yeah, um, other than this one ISO and a placement switch, I think you're doing it right. There's no reason to invest in the other four members. Ghost's the only one of importance. And by the way, if you're just new to the game, Ghost is falling off fast. Like, people are not talking about Ghost anymore. So, like, this whole team is kind of like just build it for the Jubilee unlock, and that's kind of it, right? And, and if you are going to build it for the Jubilee unlock, Ghost is the only one worth building up. So kind of like, like Boylan's got a pretty big investment in this team. I don't think you need to go that high with the entire team. Probably leave these guys in the fifties and then take ghost the rest of the way up. But it's an unfortunate team to be in. It's, it doesn't have a lot of value these days. I know it's got a, it's got a raid lane after it and stuff, but really you're just going to use ghost on that raid lane and go with the other characters. Uh, yeah. Mm, did I give this a grade? I'm thinking like a B, maybe a B minus, probably a B. It's solid, it's annoying, it's pesky. He's got enough power in here that there's some synergy still happening and everything, so it's it's okay. Heroes for Hire, 450K on total power. This is where I think you should be on your Heroes for Hire team, by the way. I think you should be basically gear tier 12, 6664, and then add in a little bit more if you feel like it. Like, talk to your alliance, see if, see if war is your thing, because they are the premier war defense team. Um, it's predicted that we've got a counter coming out for them soon. A very, very predicted, very speculative. Um, let's check this out, though. We got Skirmisher, Striker. I like it. We got Raider, Healer. I like it. We got Healer. I like Fortifier on Luke Cage now that Shang-Chi is in the team. He's going to be popping that taunt. He has, what do they call that, a reciprocating taunt, meaning whenever somebody drops below 50%, Luke Cage taunts. He's going to be targeted a lot, and he's probably going to die and revive a lot. So the rejuves aren't going to be like he's slow, so he's not going to be throwing out rejuves very fast. And the rejuves over his head are probably not going to be applied because he's just going to die, or he's going to have that hundred percent revive mechanic that all these guys have if he goes below fifty percent. So I like Fortifier because every time he dies and gets respawned, he's got that Fortifier barrier on him. He is. Oh my God, and my chair is in the way. Yeah, level four, level four ISO on that. That's, uh, you know, with the green ISOs, the, the investment isn't so bad anymore that you can switch these guys up and it's not a big deal. I think you're going to get a lot more value out of him as a fortifier. The rest of the ISOs look great. Um, as we know, Shang-Chi now has a heal heroes for higher allies for 50% on his special. It's a decent heal. It's nothing like what he had doing that negative 1,000% damage to his team. Like, that was ridiculous. Like, he crits on that and does, like, f you know, half a million heal to his teammates. It's just ridiculous. Um, so they fixed that. Whether you like the fix or not, that's a debate for another video. In fact, Boylan's probably got a good debate video on that one, so check it out. Um... I think placement isn't such an issue on this team. However, I think maybe we should go uh, calling wing to the outside. Eh, that, that's, eh, don't worry about it. Calling wings, you, you got more investment in her. She can she can be in the center and keep her off to the outside as a lower target. So yeah, do you, you, you got that right for this power level. If you, at even power level, I like to see wing, then knight, then iron fist, then uh, shang-chi, and then... Luke Cage. 
So, um, yeah. I think you're doing fine with this. I think this is fine. Um, I'm going to give you an A- minus as there are some technical little tweaks you could do to improve it. But overall, this is looking pretty good. Um, uh, you're you're going to, like, like this team scales really well. So as you add in the gear like Boylan has done here, you're going to get some pretty good value. How long that value is going to be sustained in the game is, is, uh, is up for debate. All right. Sinister six with Doc Ock. Isos are great. Placement is really good. You could swap Rhino in the placement here and get him closer to Doc Ock. Although that doesn't really matter so much because the X factor usually comes into this team. And so they're not they're not using negative buffs, they're just doing straight up damage. I think Mysterio is a liability with his uh, summons. Are they summons? Are they clones? Whatever. His mirror images. I think he's a liability, but it looks like you've got, you know, you got 107,000 invested into him with four ISOs on his skirmisher. That's a pretty sizable investment. Um, so you could probably just keep him. You know what you should do with this team? Take Doc Ock off of it. Go with an old school Sinister Six. Like if you've got a Green Goblin or a Shocker with, I don't know, 70K in there, it's still going to be like a 550K team overall. It'll be a troll defense for sure because it's a big number that you can beat with anything with Synergy. But does anybody have a 550 Synergized team lying around? I mean, sure, you could come into it with like Cree Minions and Ronin, but if somebody has 550 developed into their Cree Minion team, then... Pff, whatever um yeah i think you should take doc ock off of this team and make a hybrid with him and maybe like emma or not emma yeah emma yeah emma i always get emma and minerva mixed up maybe minerva too i don't know but i i think you should make a hybrid out of doc ock and just run this team as a filler and let it fly but as is you get an a for this team it's a good team it's a good team there's arguably other ways to do it but it's not going to make a difference in today's war so yeah yeah i, I mean the, probably the biggest thing is to change out mysterio but d you've invested in him too much so you don't want to do that take doc ock out build a hybrid team and then and then keep the old the og sinister six in here as just a troll defense okay we got secret avengers with colson and fury this is a very frustrating team you know what makes this team better swapping out colson with kestrel because then Fury is no longer such the liability and Kestrel is just a nightmare. However, you want Kestrel on offense. You don't want to put Kestrel on defense. That's not a good idea. It's just, it, we're talking the ultimate build for this team. It's Kestrel instead of Coulson. Um, I, don't, I don't like the, um, the uh, sorry, chat's talking to me. Hey, Sen Raven. Um, uh, I, I don't like colson in here i like kestrel in here it's a nightmare team to go up against you basically have to use like Shadowlands, like a big shadow lands into it or something this one kind of blows stuff up um it's not you're not gonna be using brotherhood against this team don't worry about that sam's a nightmare this is a great build it's it's still good the only liability is if somebody happens to have like a big symbiotes or something they can come into this team colson is going to try and blow him up early but i don't think he has enough damage output to do anything uh fury as a healer same thing i'd like to maybe see him as a raider i know he only has like one attack uh but when he crits you know he he gives off uh, ability energy and that could be valuable um all those summons are going to come out without death proof because there's no kestrel and so the symbiotes or the axemen can really feed off of that and it's a bit of a liability however these two are not worth investing in building bigger so i kind of got to give you the a for this team you got great isos by the way you can flip the striker skirmisher on these two you can you can flip those if you want it's kind of like on the black order with proxima midnight and corvus glaive you can go striker skirmisher on either one um depending on whether you're doing them for offense or defense they sometimes have arguably more valuable one way or the other so uh, but this is perfectly fine this is perfectly fine i just see a lot of other people doing these skirmisher and striker 
uh, variant of this, but this it's it's perfectly fine. This it's not a it's not a bad move. I'm I'm curious. I'm not building the Secret Avengers myself. You know, I'm getting the stars on them and everything because I will be using them when I get to Doom 2, but I don't need them right now. So I'm not building it. I'm, I'm not using them. So, Boylan, please let me know how this defense is working out. And let me know who is attacking into this defense also. I'd like to see that. I, I think you get an A for this. It's not a waste of resources. It's a tough team. It could be better, but I don't think you should move Kestrel off of offense. Okay, Doom Brotherhood. What are we calling this? Brother Doom? I don't know. That sounds kind of weird. Yeah, it's great. It's great defense. You're not over-investing in anything. The people who are here are doing what they need to do, which is just protect, protect Doom long enough to get a win. Um, it, this team basically requires X-Factor with Rhino. I know a lot of people keep telling me that they're like a 50-50 win with that counter. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm going into it and just kind of clicking things that seem obvious to me and, and I'm, I'm winning. And that's not a flex. I just don't know what's happening on the loss. Um, I don't know why it's going wrong for some people. It seems like a pretty solid way to attack this team. Rhino basically, Mags clumps them all together and then Rhino does a cleanse and then he can do another cleanse and because everybody's adjacent to him He gets rid of the blinds and the team can keep attacking and they just hit doom so hard and so fast that you you blow up doom before It's a, a problem. Sometimes you got to tank and alt from doom and even then they can usually survive that um, You've got striker on juggernaut he could be a raider yeah, it's pretty. There's, I can't see you doing anything. There's, there's nothing worth changing on this team for the investment. You got a good overall power level. Doom's the real threat. These guys are just here to buy Doom some time. I think you're doing fine. That's an A. I can't think of anything that you could do differently to make this last longer. To make this, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, team number seven. Here's your Emirators. I like this. I like what you did with Squirrel Girl here. That cleanse getting rid of any ability blocks that she might have or the disrupt on, on Strife, I really like this. I think you, th this is kind of the A plus uh, team version right here. It's not a variant we see very often. Nobody's using Squirrel Girl for anything. You pulled seven red stars on her, so you made her a viable character. Anybody who's doing like the, uh, the Mystic Raids understands that Squirrel Girl is kind of tanky. Like she, at the high end, she really takes a hit. So this is a frustrating, a frustrating defense to go into. You could swap out Mystique with maybe Minerva to help against the X Factor team. Eh. You could swap places with Mystique and Emma. That way when Mystique has the evade, she gives it to Sinister and Sinister can pass it to the rest of the team. But then you're missing out on any chain attacks that go through, you know, she goes invisible and makes chain attacks. So, eh, kind of whatever. I love that you have Fortifier on Strife. He's one of those tanks that really works well with the barrier mechanic, that four, four investment level, four, ISO four there. Healer, healer, skirmisher, healer. This is just a great all around team. There's, I mean, there's some tweaks that you could do, but this little trick with, with Squirrel Girl is fantastic. I love it. So A plus on this one. That's that's a great a great way to do it. The only other thing you can do with this team at this point, like, like people are coming up with some tricky stuff to do, but really take it all apart and do a hybrid with, with Emma somewhere else, maybe Sinister somewhere else. But really, this is, this is great. This is great. Uh, team number eight, the Infinity Watch is what it is you did a great job placement is always arguable on this team but i think you're doing fine um like if i go into this team i'm going to be looking at your phyla vel at this power level she's going to be my first target i'm going to go basic special basic hit auto and then probably look for maybe nebula next maybe moon dragon after that i don't know but you're going to be taking infinity watch into this so that's that's what it is the only you know a, a better choice for this team is Play them on offense so you can get a win. That's it. That's the only thing you could possibly do better. You've got Moon Dragon as a healer. Perfectly acceptable. Um, on war defense, that's probably the best choice. Striker works too, but she she's kind of slow. Relative to the other characters, she's kind of slow on this team. And you're not getting a super, uh, you know, that, that double 
tap combo eh. so healer's fine you can't argue that one i well i think mean, everybody can argue that this one it's the internet but I like the team. I'm going to give you an A for that. So uh, started out a little, a little bit of a stumble there, but ended on some really quality teams. I, I really like, I really like what we're doing here with team number seven and and the Emirators. Um, that looks very interesting. I'd like to hear back from you, Boylan, on on who's attacking into this and what they're using to beat it. Uh, that's that's interesting to me. So if you liked this episode of Defense Up, stay tuned because I got another one coming. Uh, like and subscribe, all the usual jazz. And uh, remember, don't just have a good game. Be good to yourselves and each other too. Bye.